Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another Stock Pick of the Day video. It is October 16th. Today we're going to take a look at Brookfield Infrastructure, Pro Brookfield Infrastructure Partners. This is a master limited partnership. They invest in critical global infrastructure, uh, energy, water, freight, passengers, and data. Let's jump in and take a look. So if you want to know more about this company, check them out at www.brookfield.com. That is their homepage where I pulled this information from. And whenever you go to this homepage, make sure you are looking at Brookfield Infrastructure Partners. That is what we are going to cover. They do have other uh, companies or other limited partnerships under their umbrella, under their umbrella, under the Brookfield umbrella. So again, make sure you're looking at ticker BIP, Brookfield Infrastructure Partners, and not some of their other ones. Brookfield Infrastructure Partners LP, and again, this is a limited partnership, a master limited partnership. So there are some tax implications, and these would not qualify as uh, uh, dividends that would be on a lower tax rate. These would qualify as regular income, right? So there is some tax implications around this one. You would not, uh, they would not be qualified dividends, which typically get a lower tax burden. Uh, these do have a higher tax burden. So whatever your income is for the year, that's what you would be taxed on for this year. So make sure you are talking to a tax professional if you do have any companies like this, limited partnerships, uh, REITs are another one that are taxed as regular income. So this would not qualify uh, for a lower tax rate like some other companies, you know, Coca-Cola, for example, or uh, General Mills would qualify for a different tax bracket as uh, qualified dividends. This does not. Brookfield Infrastructure Partners LP is one of the largest owners and operators of critical global infrastructure network, which facilitate the movement and storage of energy, water, freight, passengers, and data. We are one of the few pure play publicly traded global infrastructure vehicles that invest in premier infrastructure assets with stable cash flows, high margins, and strong growth prospects. Brookfield Infrastructure Partners LP boosts, boasts an experienced management team with a proven track record and a demonstrated commitment to growing returns to unit holders. And they, that's what they call them, unit holders, right? So you're not really a stockholder. They don't really consider this a stock. It's more of units that you're buying with an attractive distribution yield and a distribution growth target of 5 to 9% annually. Brookfield Infrastructure offers strong risk-adjusted total returns to its investors. So that is what they are targeting a 5 to 9% annual uh, growth rate here. And that's of your capital, right? So whatever you put in there, the dividend, it should be expected to grow with the dividend and uh, stock appreciation about 5 to 9%, which is around what the, if you're getting around 9%, that's around what you'd get in like the S&P 500. But as you can see, they have uh, operations in North America, Europe and the Middle East, Asia and Pacific, South America. So they are a global company as well. So that gives you a little bit of a little bit of exposure to global markets as well. And they focus renewable power and transition, infrastructure, private equity, real estate, credit, insurance solutions. So they have their hands in quite a bit. And most of it is like they say, they're in the infrastructure section or sector. And again, www.brookfield.com. That's www.brookfield.com. If you are interested, check them out. That is their homepage where I pulled this from. Let's keep rolling. Now, the reason we are taking a look at them down 3.5% on the day. Brookfield Infrastructure Partners is who we're talking about. Ticker BIP. They are a limited partnership, right? So again, some different tax implications around this company than would be a regular uh, like General Mills or Coca-Cola. Uh, now again, down 3.5%, a lot of green in the market today, which is one of the reasons we are looking at them. This was one of the few companies that was down on the day, uh, it was hard to find anything that wasn't in the green, which is nice to see, but also makes it more difficult whenever I'm doing videos like this, because we do look at stocks that have pulled back on the day and they have a 52 week range as low as $24 and 95 cents as high as $38.20. So they are right up against their 52 week low. And you can see here in the after hours, it looks like they're down a little bit more. So maybe busting through that 52 week low and setting a new one. Uh, we'll, we'll see, but right up against their 52 week low. Average volume 453,000 today was 1.1 million. You can clearly see that sell off throughout the day. Market cap of 11.501 billion, a beta of 0.91. Beta is the volatility of the market. One being the market, anything under one being less volatile, anything over one being more volatile. Price to earnings ratio, very high on this one, 75.97, though that is not a good metric for these type of companies. 
limited partnerships, you'd want to compare them to other limited partnerships that might be in the same sector or, or in the same uh, investing sector. Earnings per share EPS is 33 cents per share, pretty low actually. Uh, earnings date November 1st. So coming up here next month, take a look out for that if you're interested. Forward dividend is $1.53. They are a quarterly payer, so divide by four, but we'll see that here in a little bit. And they have a very nice dividend yield, 5.89%. And that is really what you're looking for on this one. If you are invested in something like this, you are looking for cash return. This is a very good one for older person who's retired looking for cash flow, right? That's what these type of companies are. X dividend date, August 30th. So we just past that. looks like they paid out in September 29th. So if you were to buy them now, you would be in line for the next dividend payout and a one-year target estimate, at least according to Yahoo Finance, of $42.33 per share. So they definitely see some upside on this one over the next year <clears throat> as far as stock appreciation goes. Now let's look under statistics. We're going to go down to dividends and splits. We're going to look at dividend yield theory to see if this one is potentially undervalued. To do that, we look at the five-year dividend yield average of 4.15%. We compare it to its current 5.89%. And right over here, forward annual dividend yield of 5.89%, same number. And since it is higher, this one is presenting some undervaluation and a significant undervaluation according to dividend yield theory currently. Now, one thing to note, payout ratio is elevated 450%. Uh, and that does look scary, but again, limited partnerships, these are typical to, like REITs. These are always going to be elevated or most of the times elevated because they do pay out a significant portion of their capital uh, to their shareholders as well as reinvesting constantly. They also do uh, dividend stock splits on occasion. So these numbers are going to be over all over the place on these ones. I don't really look at the payout ratio on these. Again, if you are investing in these, you are not looking for a lot of appreciation in the stock price, though this one does look like it might have some. You are really looking at this as an income play. That's what these type of companies are for. Now, we're going to go into the financial. A lot of good information here. You're going to find their balance sheet, their income statement, you know, their revenues. Are they paying down debt? Are they, you know, accumulating more debt? Are they increasing their share count by, by uh, diluting you as a shareholder, issuing more shares over time? All that information under there. We're going to look at free cash flow. You want growing free cash flow over time because that is what dividends are paid out of. And you want to make sure that they can cover their free cash or cover their dividends with their free cash flow. So 2019, you can see here, $999 billion, or a million, I mean, uh, 2020, 1.1 billion. So they did grow from 20 or 2019 to 2020. 2021, a little bit of a drop down here, though they were buying back some shares, though I wouldn't say that really accounts for uh, the drop in share price, but then a bigger drop from 2021 to 2022. 397 billion and I believe there was a stock split in here somewhere that may account for that so that might be part of that you would have to go back and look at that but they did buy back a big tranche of shares right here as well so they are buying back some shares but then if you look at where they're looking at to date and uh, this would be what they're estimating so far for 2023 it looks like they're going to be back in line with where they were back here in 2021 so I wouldn't say growing free cash flow though I do think you need to look at this one a little bit more because I believe there was a stock split somewhere here in 2021 or 2022. So they may indeed be have uh, growing free cash flow if you account for the stock split. But you need to do a little bit more research on this one. Yeah. I just didn't uh, go that deep on this one. So might be worth digging deeper on that. Now, I like more than one source so that I can make sure the information that I'm getting is accurate. Another one that I like is stockanalysis.com. You pick any sources you like. Just make sure that you're looking at more than one so that you can back check the information you are getting is accurate. Now, they have six stock analysts that have taken a look at this. They call it a consensus buy. They have a low estimate of $35, which would be a 39.61% increase from where it currently sits. Definitely lower than their lowest estimate. I do like it whenever stocks that I'm looking at are lower than their lowest estimate, and this one is considerably lower. Average of $41.17, which would be a 64.22% increase. And if it happened to hit their high of $45, which would be pretty close to what we saw on the previous page there with Yahoo Finance, that would be a 79.5% increase. And all the while, you'd collect that nearly 6% dividend yield. Now, I like to go into statistics. I like to look at return on equity and return on invested capital. Uh, in line with their industry average or 10% or better, I really like 10% or better. This does not meet either metric 2.40, 4.20 on the return on invested capital, 2.4 on the return on equity. Again, I like 10% or better on both. Again, you would want to compare this to other similar companies to see if that's in line with their industry average, but it doesn't meet the 10% I'm looking for. 
and they did not have an EPS growth forecast uh, for the next five years, but they did have revenue growth forecast of 6.75%. And typically, if revenue is forecasted to grow, your earnings per share is typically forecasted to grow as well. Now, let's take a look at the dividends. You can clearly see they are consistently growing the dividend over time, about 6.16%. Same payout ratio, over 400%. Again, you want to look at that. Uh, make sure that, you know, again, this might be part of share dilution or some other things, but it's not really a great metric for REITs or limited partnerships like this one. I'm not as concerned with the elevated payout ratio on companies like this. August 20th, they were paying 32 cents and some change. February 2021, they raised it up, thir up to 34, per 34 cents. February 2022, they raised it up to 36 cents. And February 2023, they raised it up to 38 cents and some fractions of a penny. So I would expect a, another raise in 2024, February sometime, and then in, in, to match this 6.16%. So decent dividend growth. This is between that 5 to 9% they were talking about that they're looking for. Overall, I would say if you're, uh, this is the vested interest stock screener. This is how I set up the videos. It's also how I look at a company on a high level like this one to see if I'm interested. Uh, you can pause it here and go through this. Overall, interesting company. If you're looking for some cash flow, you're an older investor looking for something in the infrastructure investment uh, with, with, like I said, a high, high payout ratio, this might be one to consider. It is not in my portfolio. It is not one I'm looking to add to my portfolio, but it was one that pulled back on the day. So I thought we would take a look at it. Let me know what you think down below. Is Brookfield Infrastructure Partners in your portfolio? Are you avoiding it all together? What do you think of the company? If you do own it, why do you own it? Drop it all down in the comment section below. And as always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done, done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community, building a community of like-minded dividend growth investors so we can share our experiences. Stocks like this that we may be buying or avoiding uh, are what we've picked up along the way as investors. There are some of you out there that have been doing it a lot longer than I have. So any tips and tricks that you can share with us younger investors really would be appreciated. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So if you have a company you'd like me to cover in the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop it down in the comment section and I will work it into the rotation. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion and investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk of gains, money, and never invest in any amount of comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.